started at 324 pounds and I am now down to 254.6 pounds. This has been an amazing, incredible journey, just not in weight loss, but just overall thought process and like feelings in my body and like self-confidence and mental thoughts towards myself. It has been just an incomplete wild ride and I am so excited to see where I'm gonna go from here. I learned that for me, weight loss is very much a mental game. It really came down to a thought that I had of what makes the difference for someone in their thinking towards food and just living in general that makes them have a skinny body versus the body that I was having. I felt like it very much came down to some sort of like mental thinking or kind of mental process that I was having towards food or something that I was just missing desperately. So that started me on a journey of kind of looking at the way that I was thinking towards food and what other kind of thoughts or feelings can you have towards food? Is there a difference there? And that led me to actually finding a weight loss program that is, you can either self-administer it or you can actually go through a program of uh, hypnosis where you actually work with your subconscious mind, kind of asking questions, letting things come to the surface and letting you know kind of where your where your thoughts are at with like food or weight loss in general. And that was actually really helpful for me. I, I, I'm not gonna say to recommend it for everyone because I know that there is a certain level of you have to let go and kind of be able to like talk to yourself. And this is, that can be kind of difficult for some people. So this was something that I didn't feel like I could do with another person or say a hypnosis therapist. So I decided to go the self-administering route and I actually had great, I, in my opinion, I feel like I had actually great results from that. But that started me on that hypnosis self-administered program, Close Your Eyes and Lose Weight by Grace Smith through all the steps um, from beginning to end. And that really did update my unhealthy relationship with food and particularly uh, weight loss. I had an issue with weight loss and I didn't, I had no idea that I actually had an issue with weight loss. If I could summarize that, I had verbal and mental spells about food, and body and weight. And so I had to go and break those spells, those limits or those laws that I had in my personal rule book about weight, my body, and all of that. When I was experiencing my most weight in my life, where I was over 300 pounds consecutively for um, months on end, I actually stopped taking pictures of myself completely for over a year. So I stopped on September 16th, 2020, and I went all the way until October 10th, 2021, not taking any selfies or any body pictures whatsoever of myself. So I pretty much have a whole year's time of no pictures of myself. I was not in a good mental health space towards myself, towards my body, was not dealing well with food, was not eating well, wasn't, you know, properly eating maybe, but I wasn't intuitively eating. I was eating against myself. I was kind of self-sabotaging myself with food, didn't realize it. So I, I had to go through an entire journey, weight loss journey, and a lot of it was, it was mental. It was a lot of like mental thoughts and feelings towards food, my body, and weight in general. So I had to go through the, that whole entire thing and break that up. So I did that using the weight loss hypnosis self-administered program. That's what really helped me solidify good foundations towards my body and good foundations towards food and good foundations towards weight and what that looks in a healthy way, not in the, I had a very stereotypical culture kind of mental headspace about my body and about weight and about food specifically. And now looking back, it kind of seems very childish to me, but I did have to kind of unlearn things to then relearn things. So here are the things that I learned going through that entire mental process 
and I'm gonna let you know what worked for me. And then this is an update on where I started in my weight loss journey, where I'm at now. I have reached a personal goal. I'm like halfway through and I am currently stuck at a plateau. I can get right underneath it, but I have not been able to break through. So I'm using this as a helping tool. So this is like a great first tip is to keep track of progress nothing to be seen as progress without data and you want to keep different kinds of data to see different types of progress everybody's body loses weight and learns to get fit in different ways or in different areas and sometimes that can shift depending on where you're at and what's going on with your body so this is one type of way that i keep track of my progress is i have a couple of videos already discussing first my struggles with weight loss and kind of my uh tear fest of i'm never going to become healthy and talking some some pretty raw emotional points about my weight loss journey at the very beginning. And then I had a weight loss uh, talking about the hypnosis where I actually had gained some success at the very beginning. And now it's actually been um, a couple of years since that. And I've still been gaining success and I've reached goals and this is my update. But now that I'm stuck at this next plateau, I need some help kind of getting kicked over this hills so that I can actually keep losing the weight and keep going in the direction that I want to get more physically fit and healthier and I feel like this is going to be a great kick in the butt to get me going. It is the new year and I know a lot of people they like to post you know new year's resolutions and stuff and I know a lot of a big one and a lot that people choose is your weight or your fitness your health and so I am putting myself out here officially of I've been going through this trudging along along solo and I've had some success, but I do think that I need to have some sort of extra oomph to keep me accountable and integrity of losing the weight and keeping fit and keeping going and living and having a fit and active lifestyle. So I'm going to show you what I've been doing, where I'm at, and then where I hope to get, and then hopefully we all can get to our health and fitness goals together. That's what this is about. So let's get into it and hopefully we can get there together. So for me, this is how I track my progress. I actually have it inside of a binder. And then I have a progress picture. You can actually just do a quick Google search of the kind of like dynamic that you're looking for. So your height and then the weight that you're looking for. And then you also wanna just be mindful of like your body style. We're not looking for perfection. We're also not looking to be this like perfect version of something that we're not. We want to be healthy and fit and active. And for me, my goal is to have a strong, healthy, physically active body. And so I wanted it to fit my body. So my body style is an hourglass figure. I'm lucky, woo, yay, I rolled a nat 20 on that. And the size that I would love to be down to is 185 pounds. This is my goal binder. This is my ultimate goal picture that I'm going for. And then this is at the very beginning when my starting weight was 324 pounds. I started this uh, whole journey. So we're gonna look at this. So this is my goal. So this was, you know, the way to defeat a giant is one bite at a time. You've got this no shame, no guilt. And I broke down each goal and then I fill it in with a highlighter when I get down there. I have actually reached this several times, but I actually have not um, highlighted it in. This is where I'm plateaued right now. I'm about halfway. So I'm kind of stuck here. And that's what this video is gonna hopefully help me overcome. So going through this, I wrote down my five reasons so when you get stuck, you think of the reasons why you are getting rid of the weight. What, why are you doing this? What's your push through to continue going forward? Is it that 
If I don't lose this weight, that I'm going to like have physical ramifications on my body. If I don't do this, you know, for me, I wanted to defeat body dysphoria. I wanted to finally be able to like see myself. I was like experiencing it so terribly. I wanted to enjoy food with no shame and no guilt, feel great, feel healthy. And then I did myself a favor and I just wrote down some quick, easy for meals to keep myself on the goal and not eating a healthy, intuitive way. I wrote that and then I also wrote like the reasons there's a whole intake form through the Close Your Eyes, Lose Weight um, hypnosis self-administered program. So I actually printed that off and then I wrote down the fundamentals that she goes through. So this is like each week. And then I wrote down, you know, weight goals. I lost 25 pounds, you guys, in that first program. It's crazy. I cannot believe that. So then this is the log. I hit 299 pounds. You guys, I cried. I bawled my eyes out. I could not believe it. I was... Oh my gosh, it was such a struggle. It was crazy and I experienced so much mental growth here with weight loss. It was insane going through that program. So I was like, okay, I'm starting over, brand new person here, right? And so I started tracking. I decided to start the program over again and I wrote down, you know, my goals. I finished at losing only like two pounds. I didn't even do the program. So then I started again. And this was the second time that I had started. I was planning on to end in May and I didn't do it. But what I will say is that February 27th, 2023, I was 263 pounds. And so not even doing the program, you guys. Okay. 11 for 2021, I was, I was 293.6 pounds. And just doing those basics from the program, these basics here of chew, eat, hydrate, limiting beliefs, intuitive eating, crave to exercise, emotional eating, eating when bored, going through this entire program and just living by those new mindset protocols, 263 pounds. Like that's pretty phenomenal. So I really didn't change a whole lot in my life, but 263 pounds, it's like a year ago. So a year ago and I'm now down to 255 pounds. So we've got a brand new sheet here. So let's fill this out and then let's compare from the last couple of times that I've done this where I'm at because I have my measurements in that. Let's see where I'm at and then let's, let's see if I can get myself to actually finish this because you guys, like I am so close. I feel like I started something amazing and it's so close. All right, so I got today's date, February 16th, and then I put my measurements down. So we have the neck at 14, chest at 41 and a half, the left arm at 14 and a half, right arm at 15, waist at 37, hips at 52, left thigh uh, 28, and then right thigh 27. And then how do I feel in my clothes? I feel actually really good. I feel really, really good in my clothes and in my body. And then what's my energy level? I'm not like max level today. I'm feeling a little tired today. So I put myself down at a four. And then I love some of the other things that she has on this tracker that she created, Grace Smith, from the program that I did for the weight loss. But you pretty much could do something on your own. You can make something, um, that's what I did. I made it in Excel. And then you can put whatever works for you. And then you can put any of your like things to keep in mind. You you could take a mirror and write on it so that way you look at it every day. Just do whatever you need to do to hold yourself accountable. Comparing, I have on November 1st, 2021, and then I have May 3rd, 2022, February 27th, 2023, and then February 16th, 2024. So where I started in 2021 is I had just popped under 300 pounds. My neck was at 14 and a half and it looks like my neck has stayed at 14 since um, May 2022. 
My chest started at 49 and a half at 299 pounds in May. I dropped down to 45, so I had a four and a half inch loss there. And then my chest is was at 46, so I guess I went up a little bit in February 2023. But this year, February 2024, my chest is at 41.5. So I have lost eight inches on my chest since the beginning. And I'm sure I, it was more before because I was 324 pounds when I first officially started. But I didn't, I didn't do this intake form at that specific time. I was just starting. So waist, I started at 50 inches. In May 2022, I went down to 49 and a half, so I lost half an inch. Waist in 2023 went down to 43, so I lost seven inches. And now my waist is down to 37, you guys. Holy crap. 50 minus 37. So I lost 13 inches on my waist, you guys. 13 inches. My left thigh started at 30, dropped down to 29 inches, left thigh 29 inches still, left thigh 28. So I've lost two inches there. My legs, they are always a little bit bigger. Right thigh, 31, dropped down to 29. Right thigh, 29, and right thigh, I've dropped down actually a little bit, 27. So I lost a couple of inches there on the thighs, and then our arms, I'm really hoping you guys, because my arms, oh, they were like the bane of my existence. I started my left arm at 16 inches, lost only half an inch, um, went down to 17, so I went a little bit bigger. And then my left arm came down to 14 and a half. So I lost a inch and a half, two inches there. My right arm, I started at 16 and a half, went to 14, um, went up just a little bit, 17, and now I'm down to 15. So I've lost an inch and a half on that one as well. Inch and a half, two inches. So I actually have had quite a bit of change there as well. And you guys, if I wouldn't have wrote this down, I wouldn't have record of this at all. I wouldn't be experiencing this like, oh my gosh, like I lost freaking 13 inches off my waist. You guys, I'm snatched. I'm snatched. <laughs> so that's awesome. So keep track of progress. Nothing to be seen as progress without data. Keep different kinds of data to see different progress. So maybe you're someone where you don't like lose a lot of weight on the scale. Like it just doesn't seem to happen. So I would recommend instead of just focusing on the weight and the number on the scale, maybe you need to do body measurements. Maybe you need to get a fabric ruler. Keep all those different data points and then keep track of those because you maybe your body will shift in that area as opposed to the weight number on the scale. For a lot of people, their true like reason and, and intention and in even just getting more physical in their life is just to feel better. And so if that's where you're at, then maybe you don't need to focus on the scale maybe you don't need to focus on your body physicality whatsoever and maybe you just need to track your mood do a mood tracker or maybe a overall feeling tracker or just pictures just start becoming more active in your life and then start taking more pictures of yourself and you'll just naturally see your self-confidence just start to shoot through the roof in order to keep track of progress you need to have a goal or an intention in mind in order to have something to track against we want to be very careful with setting goals or intentions if you set too big or lofty of a goal then you might kind of get stuck on where you get on the bandwagon and then you keep falling off after a while so I really recommend doing like your your small steps to your big goals so Choose your big goal, what's your main goal, and then drop it down into small bite-sized pieces. So what I did with my goals is I took my main goal and then I broke it down into smaller, like five, 10, 15 pound goals. And then I gave myself small rewards with those goals to kind of help myself keep propelling myself forward. Gives you that little drop of dopamine that sometimes you might need. I know that for neurodivergent peeps where you're ADHD or autistic, it can sometimes be a little bit harder to have a healthier, active lifestyle or just lose weight. So this is, I think, a 
really good tip or trick where if you give yourself a little dopamine or something to color in, some sort of way to keep track of your progress and then I feel good about keeping that progress. So I really recommend that. And then another really great tip, this is not um, an original tip, this is somewhere that I saw that someone said to break it down into minimum effort and then maximum effort of you know what what are you intentionally going to do and hold yourself accountable to do every day or every other day or whatever it is but then how do you make sure that you maintain it say that your minimum effort if you are absolutely like dead tired you had a heck of a day what is the minimum amount that you can expend or the minimum effort that you can put into that goal or that intention and then make sure to at least do that minimally so there is no skip days there is you hold yourself accountable to doing the action but the minimum minimum effort possible that's needed and then also your maximum effort what's the cream of the crop you're like royalty you're going through all the steps because the president is coming over tomorrow what's your maximum effort that you're going to put in to that intention or goal or action to actually get that accomplished. So the person's example that they gave is they have a skincare routine. So their minimum effort is they absolutely have to at least wash their face with water and antibacterial soap, minimum, boom, done. Easy, can be done. They can hop in the shower, wash their face really quick if need be, wash cloth, whatever it is. But minimally, that is what they're going to accomplish every day maximum effort if they're feeling like they've got all the energy and they can go ahead and do it and they want to do a whole spa day then they're going to do that they're going to do their toner they're going to do their astringent they're going to do their cleaner they're going to do the cleanser and you know then the lotion and all of that they're going to go through all of the steps and that way you have a good like almost 80 20 of doing maximum effort and putting full-on effort in but on those days where you just can't seem to have the energy or the go to like get it done at least you're at least doing the minimum effort and it helps you from getting stuck in the self-sabotage of crap i messed up i skipped a day i'm a horrible person now i'm not gonna do it at all i'm just gonna stop because that be, that would be better than continuing to even try so we want to at least set minimum effort maximum effort and then make sure to do it every single time that you said and you set the intention and goal to do so your small steps to your big steps and that's how you're gonna get there we're going to attack this monster one bite at a time so let's break down the problem areas that i had these really big crucial foundation pieces for me that really like seem to unlock the door on weight loss for me because there was a point in time where me and my husband we were both like active we were like walking a mile like a day or something like that i don't know it was like an entire we'd walk around the green belt in idaho falls every night we were eating really healthy we were meal prepping and he was losing a bunch of weight but for whatever reason my body just wouldn't it it would not seem to let go of the weight there was something that was like really stopping me from being able to lose the weight so for me, food, food, eating is something primal and affects us at core levels. Okay, so food is a security. So you're going to have trauma there. So I didn't realize that me being autistic and then also trauma being there, that food is actually a huge critical like foundation thing for me as a human being. So diet, I had to do a lifestyle change. So I had to really think about and be intentional, like mentally thinking about the food that I'm going to allow to be near me and to be in my body. So for me, a huge, huge big deal was to eat to 80% full. I did not realize that I was kind of stuffing myself with food Food. I didn't think that I was I felt like I was eating a normal amount that you were finishing your plate of food that that's normal but for me and in my family we we have full plates of food so I was eating way more than I probably should have been eating for a really long time and I was thinking 
my belief and my perception at the time was that that was the normal amount of food that you ate. And so I was literally, I remember like my stomach being so full after eating, but like I had to finish my plate. So I would just keep eating and push myself past the comfortable point of being full. And I didn't realize that at, through my weight loss journey and stuff that that's actually, you're not supposed to overfull yourself past the point of being full to where if you are uncomfortable after you eat, you've actually overeaten. And I was experiencing um, some GERD where I was having backup after I would eat this like normal amount of food that I was thinking that, you know, a dinner plate size of food is normal, but your stomach is only the size of your fist. Okay, so you thinking that you can fit a whole Thanksgiving turkey dinner every night for dinner in your stomach and then expect your brain to not send signals of warning, warning, you're over full. And so I was literally like ignoring my body as it was giving me those signals of we're too full. So I was ignoring and silencing myself, overstuffing myself with food. And then I was not eating intuitively. I would be forcing myself to eat food even though it didn't sound appetizing. So pizza. I'll force myself to eat a slice of pizza all while knowing full well as I'm eating that slice of pizza how I feel towards myself as I'm eating that slice of pizza. And so I would just force myself to eat whatever. And I understand that part of that is there is a, sometimes this is difficult for me because I think for me being homeless and not having a whole lot, I do have this like poor mentality of just eat whatever is put before me but then also you have to eat intuitively and eat healthily and healthy food, you guys, is more expensive. It Everybody knows it, it's a fact. You can go get a cheeseburger for cheaper than you can get a salad. And sometimes the salad with the dressing they give you, it's more calories than the burger. So it's like, you might as well just eat the hamburger patties off the burger, skip the buns. And honestly, that's what I do. So. Eating intuitively, this also brings me into substitutions like I just mentioned. I will substitute the crap out of anything to eat it better. And I don't care. I don't care about judgment anymore of if I'm eating a burger with my hands in a restaurant. I don't care anymore because to me, my comfort level with after eating food and how I feel in my body, that like way bigger on the scale of like, I care more about that than other people's opinions about how I'm eating the food. So I will literally take the buns off a burger and I'll just eat the patties and the meat. Just eat it like that, meat. So I'm just going like proteins and cheeses. So substitutions, I'm constantly doing substitutions. I'm constantly throwing the bread out. And I have seen a significant reduction in my weight and my, my water weight that I hold by getting rid of that those extra unnecessary to me. I'm like, I don't like the bread, so I'll just toss that out. But any other substitutions that you can do, like um, for me, I had this really like huge craving for something crunchy and salty, so I wanted potato chips. And then I did a Pinterest search for substitutions of that. And there was this whole article of like, when you have cravings for specific things, you can actually substitute those out for the thing that you're craving, like chocolate or sugar. You can trade it out for something else. Like fruit has natural sugar, so substitute that out. And then for my crunchy and kind of salty craving that I was having of like potato chips, they recommended pretzels. They recommended nuts, like peanuts, cashews, pistachios. And so that's what I did. I went and got those substitutions and I was far more pleased with those substitutions than I know that I would have been eating that bag of chips. To me, this whole 80-20 of eating where it's like 80% of the time or eight times out of 10 that I am choosing to do those substitutions or make a better choice or eat intuitively or 
eat a little bit less of something that I know is a little bit higher in calories or isn't super great for me and eat more of something else that's better for me. That 80-20, allowing myself that 20% of I can have what I want, I can eat when I wanna eat it, that 20 gives me the ability to not be so strict on myself and not push myself to that perfectionism where I'm just not going to be able to meet that standard. There's just no way it's too high of a standard for me to reach. I'm just never gonna hit that. So I've gotta just be a little bit more mindful and a little bit kinder to myself. And then water, that was like absolutely crucial. I had to start substituting out other drink choices for water. So I would do a one-to-one -one ratio of if I had a can of soda, then I need like a can amount of water and making sure that I'm just like making that as even as I can every single day. And then finding out that I was autistic and that I need to, like three drink options too and to not have shame or guilt or embarrassment about I need caffeine, I need water, and then I need something tasty to drink all at the same time. And that's okay if that's what I need. And if it's through the day, then that's awesome because I stayed hydrated by drinking several different things, but I also made sure to maintain that one-to-one -one ratio of making sure I'm pairing it with water. Drink of that, drink of that. It's like perfect for me. So that's what I recommend. And then that was all the food and like the physical eating section of the entire like thing, which yeah, a lot of that is honestly what was huge for me was food and thought processes. And so for exercise and like being physical, this really isn't a big deal for me. I feel like I'm an energizer bunny and I'm like running around doing a bunch of things and I'm like so restless and I've got to get up and move. But for me, exercise, it was really a big deal to set an intention, right? Because say, yes, I am physically active all the time but I need to track progress. So I need to set an intention or a goal so that I can have something to track so that I can hold myself accountable to doing better, right? And I think this is where I'm falling short right now. I'm gonna be completely honest. I am not actively tracking my exercise and I think this is why I'm plateaued. So we are going to start together here and I'm gonna set intentions right now of setting a goal to exercise 15 minutes minimum of an intentional movement a day and then also focus on for myself right now i want to focus on body toning i feel really good in my body but i want to feel a little bit more confident and a little bit stronger these are all my tips and notes that i've learned through this this really is important that i continue to keep being healthy and keep going and living and being active a body emotion stays in motion, so I want to continue on that path. So hopefully in my next video, it will be an update of where I'm at and that I've achieved my goal and that I'm there at 185 pounds or the specific size that I'm looking for. I just am really excited to finally see myself fully where I envision myself. So that's it for this video, guys. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Please let me know down in the comment section where you're at on your journey. Let's hold each other accountable. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Remember, I love every single one of you. I hope that you have a great day. Remember to spread kindness to yourself and to others, and I'll see you guys in my next video.